can we take an SSD out of a 13 inch MacBook Air and pop it right into this 11 inch MacBook Air and it's just going to work? We're going to find out in this video. Hey everybody, it's Chris and Family Geekery and recently I got a really good deal on a 13 inch 2015 MacBook Air and in a previous video that I'll link down below, I took the SSD out of it because this is only a 240 gigabyte SSD and I put in a larger SSD. Uh, watch that video if you want to see how I did that. But now that I've got this 240, I've also got this 11 inch 2015, which still got a lot of life in it, but it's only got a 120 gigabyte SSD. So there's really nothing else I could do with this. You can buy it in an enclosure and put it in. Uh, but but those enclosures are kind of expensive because of the proprietary connector that Apple uses So I'm not going to do that, but I figured instead of just letting this sit on the shelf Let's put this into this MacBook Air and give it twice the storage So my guess is I'm just going to be able to open this guy up here Take out the drive put in this drive and then just put it back together and boot it up That's my guess. We're going to find out if that works and I'm guessing that because Mac OS is pretty good about uh, being efficient in how it uses its drivers. So with Windows, you've got a million different manufacturers making a million different products for a Windows PC, and Windows has to kind of guess at what drivers it needs, whereas Mac only has a couple different SKUs, a couple different models each year, and all the drivers should be pretty similar. So I'm guessing that the Mac OS that's already loaded on this disk here should just find all the drivers for the hardware that's in this machine. So let's find out if that works. Let's take this apart. So using my trusty Strabetto kit here with the handy magnetic screw holder, I went ahead and took out all the screws, put them in place, Remember on most of these MacBook Airs, you got the two long screws. The magnetic tip on this thing is super strong. The two long screws are here in the back middle, back right here. And all the rest of them are all the same size. And from this kit, I use the, uh, the P5, the Penelope 5, which on this one is actually listed as a star 1.2. And took all those off, so we're ready to open this guy up. All right, so lifting from the back here, is lifting straight up with the case and that exposes the inside got a little bit of dust in there will blow out and here is our hard drive looks very similar to the one we have so we're going to take that out and replace it but first I'm going to disconnect the battery here so I've rotated this around to work on it easier and this is a little bit different than the 13 inch but it's the same premise. We're just going to use a little spudger here to pry both ends of the battery connector away and give it a slight little bend backwards so it doesn't make accidental contact. And now the batteries are disconnected from the main board and we're ready to take out this hard drive using now using the T5 tip from our kit. Just a single screw keeping it in there. Now all you have to do is just slightly lift. You don't want to lift it too much or it'll break the contacts and then wiggle it out. So here's the old one. We're going to put in the, the new larger one. Same thing, just push it in all the way. Let me use both my hands here. There it goes, snapped right in. And we can take that screw back, load it onto our nice magnetic tip on the screwdriver. And this really is the nicest uh, screwdriver kit, best deal. I got it on sale on Amazon, 20 or 30 bucks. Has every, every bit and every tool you could ever imagine. So now it's back on there. We're ready to close it up and boot it up and see what happens. And before we close it up, of course, we need to put this battery back on. 
So we're just going to bend that back down into place, snap it back in. All right, so as always, I always wait to put the screws in until I've gone ahead and booted it up and tested it to make sure everything works, just in case that something didn't make contact perfectly. So I'm just going to clamshell this thing together with my fingers, flip it over, and we're ready to lift it up and boot it up. All right, let's power it up and see what happens. And the good thing is it didn't come up with a missing disk screen already. So it looks like it's found the hard drive, obviously, and it's found Mac OS and it's booting it up. And here we go. So far so good. Let's just check out the about screen. And it does see it as a MacBook Air. and 250 gig hard drive. So I think it's all set. Now before I said you can take these guys here and put it into an enclosure. I did see on Amazon they sell an enclosure for like $70 that uses this proprietary connector. So you can slap this thing in there and make a external SSD out of it and it's USB-C so it's pretty fast but it's still only 120 gigs so bang for the buck it's probably not the best deal. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos like this. I got a couple more MacBooks I'm going to be working on pretty soon. And if you like this type of content, go ahead and subscribe. If this was helpful for you, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And I appreciate all those likes and subscribes. Don't forget to also check out our Family Geekery podcast. New episodes every Tuesday. We cover everything geeky from computers to video games to movies, comic books, just about everything. And check that out. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.